that kind of works. Um, I've been trying to make like a heart hand thumbnail for this video for quite a while, but my hands just don't want to do it. I don't know. I don't know what they're supposed to, how people do that, but my hands just don't want to do it. Um, so let's start this properly here. Um, now, Peter Zane. I'll use that as my thumbnail instead. Um, <laughs> so, I have tried to record this video three times, and each time I have fucked it up in one form or another. It is currently 1.57 a.m. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see if I can do this. Uh, so, uh, recently, I saw a horror film that I really liked, which confused me, because horror is a genre that I do not vibe with in the slightest. It is my least favorite of all the genres. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I can do a video about like films that I like in genres that I don't vibe with. And then I thought that video would be incredibly long, because that is the type of thing I would ramble about for 50 some odd minutes. So, in the interest of trying to make things shorter, I'm just going to tackle romance. And this one fucking strand of hair that doesn't want to play nice with me. Anyway, um, so romance is something that I very much do not vibe with in films. And that is because Forgive me if this is something that's come up in other videos of mine. I don't remember mentioning it. I know I've probably mentioned it on my Stardust, which you should be watching, by the way. Because unlike here on YouTube, where I can ramble for as long as, you know, I have the storage to store the video in, on Stardust, I can only ramble for 30 seconds, and I make much more of an effort to sound coherent. So, if you're interested in that, look up my Stardust. It's uh, the same, same username as my YouTube, and I post a lot more. I have a couple hundred uh, things on there. So anyway, I know it's come up on my Stardust, but I don't think it's come up here. I am uh, what some might call an aromantic, basically meaning I don't experience I don't experience a romantic attraction towards other people, you know what I mean? Like, sort of like how asexuals don't feel like sexual, physical attraction towards people. I don't feel an emotional attraction. Like, there's no emotional hard-ons going on for other people. Um, that's, I mean, I suppose that's kind of a crude way to introduce people to aromanticism, but whatever. It's my video. I'm doing it however I damn well please. And apparently that was the analogy that I felt like going for. Um, a less crude analogy that doesn't involve the phrase hard-on would be, <laughs> like, if human beings were like a Crayola box, someone, like, before I was put out on the shelves, someone opened up my box, took out the marker that was romance colored, I guess, and just sort of hucked it, and then closed up the box and put it out on the storefront. And that is probably a more, like a less crude way of explaining aromanticism. But anyway, um, so romance and me, we're not on that same vibe. But what I am on that same vibe with is this lo-fi compilation, because I forgot to do my music recommendation in the start of the video. Uh, so, you know, if you're new here, I like to uh, recommend music, and so far it's been the music that I'm listening to while talking. Um, I don't know why music just helps me focus a little more. So the music that I'm currently vibing on is this lo-fi compilation. Hold on. There we go. Uh, it's called City Escape. 
and it's my first time hearing it. I haven't heard it all the way through yet, but I'm definitely vibing on it. So, without further ado, let's get into on-screen couples that don't make me absolutely annoyed at the constant bombardment of romance in all forms of storytelling. So, the first one that I want to talk to you about comes from this motion picture right here. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and uh, just so you know, like, spoilers for anything that I talk about here, um, like, I don't want to have to give out a spoiler warning each and every time I talk about something, so, like, when you hear me talk about Scott Pilgrim or whatever else, just know that we're in spoiler territory here. Now, Scott and Ramona are one of, you know, my favorite couples ever. I know there are people who feel like Scott and Knives should have gotten together at the end. Um, I don't feel that way. Like, I've seen the alternate ending, and the first time I saw it, I was like, you know what, that makes more sense. But I watched it a second time, and I really thought about it, and I can't remember any point in the film prior to that where I thought Scott and Knives should be together. Like, Knives is a really good person, you know, she's arguably a much better person than Scott is, so I guess that makes you want to kind of root for them to get together, but I think Scott and Ramona are a better fit for each other, just vibe-wise. Like, like, I just don't buy the Scott and Knives connection, you know, I think it was doomed to fail, but Scott and Ramona... I, I was fucking cheering for that the whole time. Uh, I mean, if you're not familiar with the concept of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, basically, um, a long time ago in the mysterious land of Toronto, Canada, Scott Pilgrim was dating a high schooler named Knives, and they eventually broke up because Scott fell for this girl named Ramona Flowers, and in order to date this girl, he had to fight or defeat her seven evil exes. And that's, that's basically the concept of the film. Um, and it's executed in a very, very good way. It's in my top ten favorite films of all time. I guess you'd call it like a romantic action comedy, maybe. I don't know, a lot of visual humor. I'm, I'm working on a review for Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, I've filmed it, I just need to edit it. Which I should be doing now, but that's not the point. Um, so I'm not going to talk about the film too much. I'm just going to just gonna say that I think, like, you know, obviously Scott and Ramona aren't the best people, but save for young Neil... Nobody in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World could be considered the best people. Um, that's kind of part of the point of the film, you know? Is that it's all somewhat shitty people. But Scott and Ramona find a way to be, like, happy, you know, with each other. And there's just something about their vibe, you know, mixed in with this, like, melancholy 20-somethings 20 floating through life type of vibe. And I'm, I'm here for it. I'm down. Sign me up. Scott and Ramona. I am putting my aromantic seal of approval on that relationship. Um, the next one that I thought I'd talk about is two characters whose names I forget. I believe one of the names is Jack. Um, but anyway, uh, Brokeback Mountain. Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger's characters. If you're not familiar with the film, uh, it's probably the best romance film I've ever seen, you know? Like, it's tough between that and Blue is the Warmest Color, but I would have to probably give the edge to Brokeback Mountain, partially because I don't have to read subtitles when I watch it, and that's a big thing for me. Um, so... Brokeback Mountain, 
is basically these two dudes are working together on, like, I believe it's like a cattle ranch, and they basically work out in the woods together for extended periods of time, and they find out that, you know, they have feelings for each other, but the problem is this is, I can't remember what decade this takes place in, but it's before any type of queer relationships would be acceptable in mainstream society. Um, I mean, the film itself came out in like 2003 or four, I think, but I believe it was meant to take place multiple decades before then. Um, it's been a while since I've seen the film. Like, I didn't prepare for this video, I just sort of turned on my camera. Anyway. It's, it's a really sad film, but the relationship itself is it's bittersweet, but in the really good way. Like, there's a lot of tension in the relationship because they have to, like, hide their feelings for each other due to society, you know. Like, they each get married to different women. Um, I mean, they're not going to get married to the same woman, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, they try to become family men and just do what they're supposed to do but they they still have feelings for each other and they try to see each other whenever they can and hostilities form but you can tell like all the hostile tension comes from you know wanting to be with the other person but it's difficult you know it creates a lot of difficulties so they resent those difficulties, but they're still connected to each other, you know what I mean? And I think it's it's a really sweet relationship, and it's sad, but I love it. I love the film. So, Brokeback Mountain, I vibe with it. Um, last, but not least, in the uh, film category, is Your Name. Now, the two lead characters in Your Name, I, I forgot their names too. Um, I did not prepare very much for this video. But anyway, the two leads, so they're adorable together. Like, this, uh, the concept of the film is basically these two, I believe they're high school kids, I might be wrong on that. Um, Basically, they swap bodies at random times, and they'll sort of live a day through the other person's life, you know? And then, like, they'll wake up and they'll be back in their regular, their own bodies. And, you know, over the course of a couple scenes, they start to kind of fall for each other because they see the world through the other person's eyes, and they develop connections with each other and it's it's just fucking beautiful like I just want to hug this movie for the entirety of its runtime and I mean the visuals in this film are also incredible love the animation it definitely helps with the really tender warm soft heart feelings uh, but like Fucking damn, dude. Your name. It's absolutely beautiful. And like, like the ending of the film, again, I'm not gonna spoil it, but let's just say, like, I spent the end credits just sort of hugging a pillow and like, just sort of laying on my bed in silence, curled up in a ball of emotion. Um, in a good way. In a good way. So, your name. Fucking love it. Um, let's get into television. Let's talk about that. So, this first, this first couple, um, I just want to say in advance, calm down and hear me out for a second. So, this is from Game of Thrones. Uh, so, Jamie and Cersei Lannister. 
Now, again, hold up. Hold up. I'm not condoning their relationship. I don't think that they're good for each other. But this is Game of Thrones, and you don't sign on to Game of Thrones for people to make healthy life choices. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not condoning incest. I'm not condoning anything Cersei Lannister has ever said or done. Um, I mean, like, Cersei is a loving mother, though. You know, like, find me a character in Game of Thrones that doesn't have any redeeming attributes. You know, whether or not they get outweighed by their shittiness is a different story. But, like, you, you know what I mean. Game of Thrones is about people. Uh, sometimes they're shitty, sometimes they're not. But they're all just people, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, there's, there's some real interesting feelings that I have for Jamie and Cersei. Like, they don't make me believe in love or anything. Not that I'm looking for that. You know, I mean, I don't expect films to do that. But, like, just the way the characters influence each other, you know what I mean? Like, imagine what Jamie Lannister would be like without Cersei. Be, be a completely different character. And... I mean, I think Cersei would be a bit of a bitch, regardless of Jamie being in her life. But, but still, the scenes that they have together are some of my favorite scenes for each of their characters. And, you know, so it might not be the romance that I'm like, oh, you know what? That makes me feel all warm in the chest. Because, you know, it doesn't. But I don't sign on for that when I watch Game of Thrones. So, Jamie and Cersei Lannister, one of my favorite romantic pairings in any visual medium. So, yeah, that's my story. And I may not have delivered it as articulately as I could, but it's 2.13 a.m., so I'm sticking with it. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, moving on. So, hmm. this one I didn't plan to talk about, but I got thinking about it when I was talking about uh, Jamie and Cersei. This comes from Bojack Horseman, and it's really like any, well, I say any, it's Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane, as well as Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles. Um, like, Mr. Peanut Butter is my fucking guy in BoJack Horseman. I don't know if he's my favorite character. I don't know if he's the character that I relate to the most. All I know is that Mr. Peanut Butter is my fucking boy. And, like, him and Diane splitting up was just like, just like, Take, take, like, my heart, right? Twist it. Like, tear it out of my ribcage. And just, like, toss it away. Uh -huh. Like, I knew they weren't going to work out, you know. No part of me thought that they would stay together throughout the whole show. But that fucking scene where, you know, uh, they're in... They're in their house, and Diane gives that I'm so tired of squinting line. Fucking, oh, like, like my eyes were watery, because I felt so bad for the two of them. And, like, with Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles, I thought that was a really interesting dynamic. Um, because, like, the whole time I was just like, dude, get your shit together. But, like, also, you know, Pickles was really sweet. And, you know, I love Mr. Peanut Butter. And I think Pickles is a pretty decent character. And it's like, as much as I want them to be happy together, I know that they're not together for the right reasons. And 
So, again, sort of like the Jamie and Cersei thing. Neither of those pairings make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, but they are romantic pairings, and I do find them incredibly interesting. So, there's that. Um, that just kind of got thrown into the video. That, this was the first take out of the three where I've mentioned Mr. Peanut Butter. So, I don't know. Anyway, um, this is a much more healthy relationship. Um, at least, you know, from what I remember, it's been a while since I've seen Sons of Anarchy. Um, there was definitely a time when I considered it my favorite show. I don't know where it is in the rankings currently, um, but for a time, it was my favorite show. And uh, the pairing that I, we decided to talk about was, because I think there are some good ones, like generally speaking, uh, the couples in Sons of Anarchy, I thought the show did right, um, you know, at least, like, Jack's and both of his wives, whose names I forgot all of a sudden now that I'm on camera, um, I, I don't know why. Like, I've watched the show a lot. I don't know why I forgot their names. But anyway, uh, hold on, my lo-fi's shutting off. I gotta fix that shit real quick. Um, Alright, uh, we're now vibing on a lo-fi compilation called Nighttime Ramen. Uh, the thumbnail like a lot of fucking glare going on. I can't remember. Oh, good. And, I don't know. The compilation's called Nighttime Ramen. It's my first time hearing it, but I like the first couple seconds that I've heard, so if you feel like continuing to vibe on what I'm vibing on as I'm talking at you, that's what it is. Um, anyway, who was I talking about? Sons of Anarchy, um, so Tig Traeger and Venus Van Dam, that pairing right there, I am all about it. I am 100% balls deep invested into Tig and Venus as a couple. Um, you know, right from the beginning, they hinted that they could become an item, and... You know, it was kind of played for comedy at first, you know, because, like, uh, when Venus came in, you know, it was, like, you know, a room full of, like, violent bikers and whatnot, and, uh, holy shit, it's 2.19 a.m. Anyway, you know, it's this room full of, like, edgy, violent bikers and whatnot, and this uh, transgender prostitute comes in and, you know, the only person who really takes her seriously is Tig. And, and you know, it's sort of played for laughs, like, ooh, look at Tig being attracted to the woman who's really a man, you know. And it's sort of played that way. But, like, throughout the show, you know, especially... Like, in the later seasons is when Tig and Venus become, like, an item. And, you know, like, people would give Tig shit for it. And he never let them get the upper hand, you know what I mean? Like, he always stood up for him and Venus. And, like, you know, he just never, he never let anyone step on his relationship with her, like, he, he always had Venus's back, and there was, like, that scene in, I believe, season seven, where Venus is really upset and feeling insecure, and, uh, like, Tig assures her that, you know, he loves her for who she is, and, you know, like, he, she thinks that maybe Tig's, like, ashamed of their relationship, and he assures her that he's not. And they, there's just this really good 
connection in the scene. And it was one of my it's one of my favorite scenes of the show actually. And it had me it had me emotional. Like it didn't make me cry. I can't remember the last time a scene in television or a film made me actually cry. But this one had me emotional. Like it had it had that pre-com of the eye going on where there aren't tears but there's there's moisture up in the face and it was it's a really powerful scene if i haven't articulated that yet and i don't know it just felt really like sweet and it was like a wholesome thing in this very not wholesome world and i love it like talking about it now I want to go back and rewatch Sons of Anarchy and just knowing that Tig and Venus are going to be a thing and it's it's really it's really fucking cool love it um and by the uh, fun fact so in my earlier videos I used to intro with the phrase Gutentag um cuz like I took German in high school and whatnot uh, in the past couple videos, uh, my kind of opening phrase, so to speak, has been salutations, and that is largely uh, due to Venus Van Dam. Uh, I think, like that was her first line in the show when she walked into the room with all the, all the Sons of Anarchy there, and she walks in, it's just like salutations, gentlemen, and I really like the way she said it. So I kind of stole it. Um, so that was just some fun trivia. Um, anyway, the last the last couple that I wanted to talk about, and really it was the reason that I thought of the video, you know what I mean? Or it was the couple where I thought of and then I thought, okay, yeah, I have to film this. Uh, Bob and Linda Belcher from Bob's Burgers. So... Bob and Linda, just holy shit, they are, you know, if I haven't established it already, completely aromantic right here, but Bob and Linda are marriage goals, like, they're so good for each other, you know what I mean, like, their vibes, they're very contrasting, like, in the words of Mr. Miyagi, they are different, but same, and... I love it. Like, I'm much, I'm much more of a Bob, but I appreciate that Linda energy that she brings to the show, and her and Bob just play off of each other so well. They're like, I mean, don't get me wrong. When it comes to like adult animated shows, Bob's Burgers isn't quite my favorite. King of the Hill is, but like. Hank and Peggy don't make me think marriage is a good idea. Um, like, of course, not like Peter and Lois, or like Archer and Lana, or oh, what are other examples? Um, I've been watching F is for Family. That's not exactly the best marriage you can ever watch. Um, but like, Bob and Linda are just the most wholesome, like, healthy couple. And, like, they make each other's lives better. And it's really sweet to watch. Like, every, every episode, there's at least one moment in there that makes me go, oh, they're, like, meant to be together. And it's perfect. And, you know, it's just, it's just nice, you know? Like, I mean, what any other show where it's like a family based, it usually makes marriage seem like it's somewhat of a chore, you know? Like, even if, you know, they're, it's a, about a good household, it's like there's always, like, Hank and Peggy are often kind of in contrast with each other. Um, I haven't seen enough of The Simpsons to really get a grasp on, like, Homer and Marge. I do like The Simpsons, but it's not the point. 
Um, but like, you know, Peter and Lois, it's like, whatever. Um, or Archer and Lana, it, it's a bit more well written. Not to diss on Family Guy, but like I like the chemistry between Archer and Lana a little bit more. Um, but fucking Bob and Linda, like there's no moment in the show where I don't think Bob and Linda should be together. You know what I mean? It's just pure. Like, that's what marriage is supposed to look like. You know what I mean? Like, all, all about Bob and Linda being together. Like, it, it also makes me question whether or not I want to have kids, because I don't. But then I watch Bob's Burgers, and I'm like, fuck, maybe. <laughs> um, and like, you know, obviously, marriage isn't, in my future, but Bob and Linda, are, they make me think, well, fuck, maybe there is something to that whole romance thing. And, like, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it feels like, but clearly it must feel pretty damn good, because Bob and Linda. So, that that's basically it. This went way longer than I intended it to. Um, I was trying to slay this bad bitch out in, like, 20 minutes, so going to stop rambling because it is 2.27 a.m. My battery is like 34% on my laptop and I should probably go to bed. Um, so yeah, oh, and uh, before I go, technically uh, it's not his birthday anymore because, you know, it's in the early a.m., but uh, my absolute biffle the guy who i was talking about uh in your name that segment uh it was his birthday recently so in the event that uh you watch this happy birthday good sir um yeah all right so i'll peter zane There's a pause button. Alright, Elfeeter Zane, but like for actuals this time.